My name is Tom Smith and I'm a professor at the University of California in Los Angeles and uh, for the last 30 years I've been working in camera. I first came here in 1983 as a new graduate student with a backpack on my back. At the time there was one international airport and a, and a dirt road to the capital city that sometimes took 20 hours. People who haven't been to Central Africa or the Congo Basin will be amazed at the diversity. It's some of the greatest biodiversity anywhere in Africa, and that includes some of the rarest animals on the planet. And so there's just tremendous discoveries to be made. Central Africa is home to some of the richest natural resources anywhere in the world, and yet it also faces some of the most severe problems. I've worked in Central Africa all my life. There's a lot of changes that I've seen. Mostly the scale ones are the depletion of the environment and our loss of our biodiversity. We're really at a critical juncture right now. I mean, we've got climate change, uh, which is going to affect Africa more severely than any other place on the planet. There's one billion people in Africa. That number is expected to quadruple by the end of the century. And so this puts tremendous pressures on, on trying to understand how we're going to feed people, how people are going to get enough water. And then we also see a brain drain of the people who are most likely to be able to solve those problems leaving and going to the developed world. Of the folks that go overseas for higher degrees, only 20% come back. And, and as a consequence, we're losing the best and the brightest. When I was growing up, I really wanted to be a scientist. So I went to Nigeria and did life sciences. I moved back to Cameroon as an ecologist, as a plant ecologist. But at the time, there were no jobs here. I couldn't practice my trade as an ecologist. When I talk to scientists, young scientists from, from Central Africa or Cameroon, it's clear to me that every single one of them cares deeply about their country and on some level really wants to come back here and help work on the problems here. This is your environment, this is where you were born and this is where you were raised. So staying out of it, it's really taking a huge part of your history away. So it is very difficult to move from home. A lot of African countries are now saying, hey, we don't want to send you our best and brightest because you keep keeping them, right? So instead, please come over here and partner with us. We need to have a stable base in Africa where Africans can train in partnership with people from the developed countries, but working on their own problems, developing their own solutions. The Congo Basin Institute is striving to do just that. We're bringing in premier researchers from all over the world, providing critical training for African scientists, but then also providing the infrastructure and lasting resources that they need in order to come up with those solutions and then implement the solutions. The Congo Basin Institute is, is planned to be on part of the campus of the Institute of Tropical Agriculture. We have a site uh, chosen out. The first phase will include a, a conference center, a distance learning center, and then dormitories. And what that does is leverage the existing facilities in a way that uh, makes IITA run really 24-7. There is a base already, and this base has core facility, has the partnerships that will support uh, the mission of the Institute. For us at IITA, it's a win-win situation. And together, we can do a lot more than we can do individually. It's also going to be a green facility. So everything we do is going to be focused around that sort of theme of sustainability. Now, I've been working here for 30 years, and it, it took me 10 years before I really understood how to get research permits, how to, how to get in the door. And we need to change that. And I think that once we do, the floodgates are going to open. And so what we're doing is providing the, a facility that can help anyone coming in. So we can get them permits before they come to the country. And we can make sure that they connect with the appropriate researchers at the university. There is a hesitancy of donors to want to support infrastructure, and I get that. You know, it's, it's expensive, you build a building, they rather see programs. But in this case, you can't have the programs, you can't build the capacity unless you have a place where all of this can come together. How much are we talking about for phase one? Seven million dollars, okay? That's a really nice house in Southern California, but this has the potential to change Central Africa. 
and I, and I really believe that. I'm crying just thinking about the possibility of like the project being fully funded and walking in and seeing African students working hunched over their computers with American students. But you know, once it's fully funded and we have the infrastructure, that's just the beginning. You know, I'm an academic. I publish a lot of papers and had a lot of graduate students, gotten a lot of grants, but this is my passion. If we can make this a reality, um, it's going to be my life achievement without a question. The CBI is really one of the things that will really help, not just me, but so many different Africans. It will be a big dream come true, and I will be ecstatic to come back and do my work and try to train as many Cameroonians as possible. I think the CBI is a very good thing that will help us come back, so many of us. C'est la vie, la vie, la vie, oh.